actually I'm tempted to speak on Ezekiel. Then I was further tempted to speak on the gospel. But the Lord said, you speak in Ephesians. Let me to speak on how to celebrate Christ the King. I think we have four weeks of Advent, which we can talk about the Christ. So today we are going to talk about us, the Christians. We are going to talk about the adventures of a Christian life. The book of Ephesians is very interesting. It talks about the church, the Christians, how they ought to live, how they ought to behave, how to pray. So it's a good teaching there. So today's portion is Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23. But I'm taking the whole chapter. All right, you go home and read the whole chapter. So this message can become alive. These verses are very, these verses which we read are very important to a Christian. Many of us are born in Christian families and are used to church. We come on the Sunday morning, sing few songs, listen to the scriptures, get used to a boring guy like me talking for 20 to 30 minutes. And then you go home and come next Sunday. That's what a Christian life is today. I call that submarine Christians. Sunday morning they are up in the ocean with the light and everything. Then by Sunday evening they go down under the sea. They don't come up till next Sunday morning. It need not to be. It need not be. Paul says the Christian life is an exciting and adventurous life. Paul said it's an exciting life. It's an adventurous life. Any adventure will have thrilling moments and frightening moments. Remember this, two things. Any adventure will have thrilling moments. Enjoy life. Very nice. And there'll be frightening moments. You don't know what's going to happen. You may have fear. So adventure is like that. You do not know what lies ahead. You do not know what's ahead. Only the Lord knows. All right? And you need certain qualities to be an adventurer. Everybody cannot be an adventurer. Most of us are armchair adventurers. We sit in the armchair, comfortable. You put a footrest have a coffee or you have a cold ring or a Milo and watch the uh, National Geography or the Wild Discovery and see the adventure and enjoy it. That's what we do. Most Christians are like that. Come on a Sunday morning, sit nicely and they talk about it and enjoy it. Never be part of the adventure. But Christian life is adventure. You have to move. All right, and Christian life is not an uh, armchair adventure. All adventures must have a certain qualities, sir. And to begin the adventure, you must have certain qualities. If you don't have the qualities, you can never be the adventure in the Christian life. If you are an adventure you to go into wild, you must prepare your physical body. You must know the knowledge which emergencies come. You must know how to swim. You will know how to start a fire, how to survive in the wild if you are stranded. So you have to be prepared for every eventuality. To be a Christian adventure, the Lord has done something for you to be prepared for the adventure that lies ahead of you. In fact, he did five things for us. Number one, he redeemed us. Number two, he cho chose us. You are not here by any chance. You are here by choice. The choice of the Lord. He chose you to be here. Thirdly, He adopted us. When He adopted us means when you are in need, He will give you help. You understand? There was a girl, 16 or 17 years old, went on a solo cruise on a boat, you know, all around the world. And the father said, don't worry. 
I will be following you on the satellite. Make sure the transponder is all the time on. So that I can pick you up all the time, you know, I can watch you from the satellite. So I know you are having any problem, anything, I can immediately summon for help. Because the father has the daughter was interested in the safety and well-being of the daughter. Our king, our Lord, is interested in our well-being. So he has adopted us to be his ch children. You, you get a point. That's the meaning of adoption. He has adopted us into his family. Now that is why Paul wrote and said, now we can boldly say, Abba, Father. Abba is Father Allah. So Abba, Father. That's why. He made us heirs of the kingdom. Because we are the heirs of the kingdom, that means the kingdom must continue. I'm talking in physical and earthly terms. If the king will be very much interested in his son, his safety, his security, his well-being, because he, the next king will be he. So he must take care of him. So the Lord will take care of you. All right, so he is there. And then he sealed us with the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom. I told you emergencies, you must be prepared. The Holy Spirit will give you the guidance. So the five things the Lord did for us to begin the Christian life, the adventurous Christian life. Number one, he redeemed us. Number two, he chose us. Number three, he adopted us. Number four, he made us heirs of the kingdom and he has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. Now, knowing this, knowing this, we will now move on. God has called us to be partakers of his kingdom. He didn't just say, he said, the minute partakers, the word partakers means you have a part to play. You know, you are not to be an audience, but you have to be a part of the drama that is taking place. You understand? In the Christian life, you are part of the kingdom and you are partakers. You have to participate. You have to act. He has blessed us in Christ Jesus with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. To begin this adventure, the blessings of the Lord is with us. But he is, it is in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Alright? And then he said, the spiritual blessings. No, so we must know. God has given me, first he prepared me with five things. Now he is going to prepare me and bless me. And what are the things? If you are an adventure, you have to carry certain things and go, you know. You must have nice shoes, protection from mosquitoes and insects. And you must have some medicines with you in case you are bitten by a snake or an antivenom. Uh, and then you must create, you carry some important tablets. When you don't have pure water, you take the water from the stream, you put the tablet inside and there will antibacterial, antivirus, then you can drink it safely. So like that, he has given you. What you Number one, we will see Jesus face to face. Because why was, you know, what's the importance of seeing Jesus face to face? Can you remember what is it about? Light. When Moses saw Jesus face to face, when he came down, his face was glowing. The people couldn't see his face. If the shadow or the reflection of God's glory is there, that great, if we see Jesus to face, our paths will be lightened because our light will shine forth. All right? And forever we will be in the presence of God. That's why Paul writes in Romans, whether we are in the sea, on the earth, in the prison, out in the open, or in the pastures, on the wilderness, the love of God will not separate us from his presence. Whatever places you are, wherever you are, in whatever circumstances you are, God's presence is with us. Like I told you, the father was watching the daughter through the satellite all the time. God is watching over us. So we no need to worry. The third thing is, we will join the communion of saints. You're not alone in this adventure. Our church may be a small congregation. 
But there is a worldwide congregation this morning praying. Some will start that those from Japan and all would have started earlier than us. Now we are here. Next two hours, other countries. Next ten hours. It will be a continuous all this Sunday. Everybody praying. And most of the churches, I mean the mainland churches, will be talking about Christ and his king. And the king, Christ. So we are uh, in adventure with the king. All right. And rest from our labors. That doesn't mean uh, when you're a Christian, you give up your work and say, no, no. The rest from labors means you uh, mental worry will go away. You will do your work. You'll have all the problems. You will have emergencies. You will have uh, health problems. You will have. But your mind and your spirit will not be bound down by these problems. You will have rest. You will have rest. That's why the Bible says, God gives a good sleep to those who loves him. We love God, so we can have good sleep. We can have good sleep. The sleep is the mental rest we need. And then we will be free from pain and disappointment. All of us have faced pain and disappointments. The physical pain is nothing compared to the pain of disappointment. When people disappoint you, when you are disappointed, it hurts deeply. It's not the pain which we can bear. And it can pull you down. It can make you, uh, what I say, uh, disinterested in life. The disappointment can be very, very damaging to your psychological and mental health. But we all face disappointments. So he says... You will be free from it because the Lord is in control. You will know that, okay, the person, this thing disappointed me. I lost this opportunity. I'm disappointed by my children or by my friends or my family. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because the Lord is still in control. He takes care. And we will receive the rewards of God's promises. To you, the faithful. God has promised certain things. You must look at the promises of God. You can do an exercise every day. You look at the Bible, put a, take a notebook and write down the promises. You just simply write down. So today, okay, this Sunday, I will write down the promises which I read. From Genesis, you go ahead. Genesis 1, you go ahead. And you will read about it. Number one in Genesis chapter two is water. Do you know that? The earth was void and was filled with water. You know, water is very important. In Malaysia, we are blessed. We are truly blessed because we have a lot of water. Uh, the, our 98% of our underground water is untouched. Do you know that? 98%. Countries like India and all that, they have a, Depleted 60% of the water. In America, Tennessee, Valley Authority there, they have depleted more than thing. China has depleted 90% of their water. So there can be water shortage. Revelation says people will hunger and thirst after water. No water, no food production. No water, no cleanliness. No water, you cannot quench your thirst. So water is very important. That is why Jesus cried out in John chapter 7, verse 37 and said, Those who thirst come unto me, I give you the living waters. So it is very important. So that's one reward that you get. Then you can put a book and every time, maybe tomorrow you will not, don't have time. Maybe the day after that, your wife asks you to sweep the house and you have no time. It's okay. Wednesday morning, you read the Bible, you can write down what the promises you read in Genesis chapter 2. Any three, you know, you write down and then you remind that everything. You, you, it will be a good exercise for us. But not only that, you, God wants you to be an adventure in Christian life. He is going to give you power. Without power, nothing works. Without electricity power, I don't think so. Any of us can stay here more than 20 minutes. We rather have our service in the park. Because the sun's power 
and the wind power will keep us bright and cool. But we have electric power and therefore we think. So you must have God's power. So number one, God's power is not limited. It's free of charge. It's not limited at all. You can use as much power as you want. The power is only directed to the faithful. Though generally he gives the power to everybody, the sun and all that, but his special powers he gives it to you. You know Mark chapter 16, he says, I give you the power. You can, in my name, you can cast out the devils. In my name, you can heal the sick. That are the powers that are given to you. The power is in action where there is hope. If there is no hope, the power is not in action. It's like switch off the main light. You know the main switch, you off it, there's no power. Hope is that switch. You have hope, you're switching on the power to flow into your life. And power is sufficient to overcome the wiles of the devil. This power which God gives you is good enough is to overcome the devil. After all, our adversary is Ephesians chapter 6 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You and I are not fighting with each other. Of course, there are national wars going on. Right? What I'm talking about is, personally, a good Christian need not to fight against another people. That's why Jesus said, if somebody forces you to walk one mile, walk with him two miles. He'll get bored of your company and chase you out. You, you get a point. That, that, that is the, the thing. So we have power to overcome the devil, the ultimate evil. We have the power. God gives us that power. So these are the things basically for to be an adventure. So now we are already know. Number one, we know that we had prepared us. So I gave you five points. I don't mind repeating. He redeemed us, chose us, adopted us, made us heirs of his kingdom and sealed us with the Holy Spirit. And then he gives you the uh, confidence that you must go into this adventurous life. Number one, you will see face to face with Jesus, so you get the light. Then you will be, God's presence will be for us all the time. And then you will be in the company of saints. We pray for one another. The Bible says pray for one another. So we are praying, we are in the company of the thing. And then we are rest from the labor. Whatever happens, our mind is focused, our mind is stable, and we have the inner joy. That's why Paul wrote and said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice because the Lord is with us. Then he says, we are free from pain and disappointment. Whatever disappointments, whatever pains we have, the Bible says that we will be, our mind, our hope, will, our soul will be free. That's why Jesus said, when the sun sets you free, you'll be truly free. All right. And then he says, we receive the rewards of God to the faithful. Then we also understand the power. Because to be an adventure, you have to have power to go ahead. The power is not limited. The power is directed to you. And the power is in action where there is hope. And the power is sufficient to overcome the devil. Now, with all this, you are now you are prepared to begin the adventure. With all this in your mind, you are ready to begin the adventure. So, Paul says you need three things. Before you take your first step, you need three things. Number one, he says, you must have the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom is very important. It is not talking about the Holy Spirit here. Because the spirit you put is a small s. The spirit of wisdom is the knowledge you acquire. And you have to utilize that knowledge to make you wise. All right. How does a child learn not to eat chili? The chili is red, you know, very nice. You keep that. The baby three or four years old. See the red thing, huh? so tempting like a candy. Put in the mouth, then ah! the next time see the red one, a bit careful. That is why they chose the color to be red. Red danger. So you learn wisdom from experience. So you come to the church to get experience. You meet all kinds of Christians. The nasty Christian, the ugly Christian, the jealous Christian. You know, we have to self-examining ourselves. 
you have the gossiping Christians, the slandering Christian. So you have to get all this and be careful, be wise. Because the church is full of the wheat and the chaff. You remember the parable God said? The devil came and put them in. They want to pull it out. He said, don't leave them there. I will do it at the last day. So maybe be careful about slandering, gossiping and all that. The revelation in the knowledge of God. You must have a revelation. When you read the Bible and meditate upon it, God gives you a revelation. God gives you a revelation. You see, the revelation is not universal. Like I am facing a problem. I am reading the Bible. I am praying about it. And God will answer me through the words of God, Bible. He will answer me. Your situation may be different. He will give you a different revelation. My revelation may not suit you. Your revelation may not be agreeable to me. But your revelation which God gives you will be suitable for you. Alright? Remember that. Enlighten eyes of understanding. He prays. I pray that God will give you enlightened eyes of understanding. An adventurer, when he goes through the jungle or through the wilderness, he must have some understanding. All right. If I see this type of trees there, I know a lot of flowers. There must be a honeybee around. You get a point. And if I see a lot of uh, lizards and all that, then I know there will be, and frogs, then I know there will be snakes around. Because they feed on them, you know. That's known as the light of understanding, knowing things. Knowing things and avoiding them. That's why the Bible says, when you see a wicked and a worker of unrighteousness, move away from him. Move away, don't go and confront him. Somebody say politics is a gutter. How religion is sweet swelling aroma. How much you put the swell uh, the religion into the gutter, the gut the religion will become stinking only. It can never be the gutter will never become pure. Sure, you go and pour in your gutter some scent and see. After style still, the scent smell will not be there. Only the gutter smell will be there. So you have to use your wisdom and understanding. Why God has given a brain here, understanding inside here, not here, you know. The heart is a pump. The thing is here, up in the, uh, the word is lab and nose. Lab and nose, the uh, Hebrew word, lab and nose. And where you receive information, you digest information, and then you <clears throat> bring out the good thing. These two things are working on you. And it is so important. This is not important, the heart, you know. This is important. The rib is one of the weakest bones in the body. Give a strong punch it, you can break. But this one you can knock, huh? very difficult to break. Uh, tell you that this inside this skull is very important. This is where your thinking process is, where your logos is. So you have to think. And another strong bone is your jaw. You know, that's why whenever you see old bones, old graveyard, you go hundreds of years, you see, you hardly see a rib or a fingers or anything. The only two things you see the skull and the jaw. Why the jaw? Because the tongue is kept there to keep in imprisonment, keep your jaw tightly locked. So he says, enlightened understanding, you must understand things. So after Paul has advised you these things, you need these three things to follow the adventure. All right? To know the hope of your calling. Everyone is called for a purpose. None of us are redundant in this world. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody has a part to play. It's like cooking a dish. Let's say a dish of meat. You need meat. You need salt. You need uh, spices to mask the smell of the meat. All right? You need flavorings. All right? You need some sweetening like uh, uh, the coconut milk. So you need things. Each one has a play part. 
the whole world needs each one to play a part. If you don't have the part to play, then you are redundant, you are removed from the picture. You have to be active, you cannot be lazy, you, know? you have to be active. So he says, you know the hope of your calling, you have a calling. Whatever the calling is, you will know. Last week I preached to you, how do you know the gift you have? Then if you know the, your gift, you know the will of God in your life. You have a gift, I have a gift of gap, so I know my calling, I have to preach. You have a gift of playing music, God knows you have to be in the choir. If you have a gift of cooking, you have to give us food every Sunday we come. Everybody has a gift. That's the will of the Lord, accept it. So the hope of your calling, you must know. And then the riches of the glory of God's inheritance for you. It doesn't matter, you know, like last week I told you, it doesn't matter whether you work at 9 o'clock, or you work at 12 o'clock, or wait at 3 o'clock, or work at 5 o'clock. The reward God gives is rich. You know, the person who works from the morning maybe feel bad. Luck. But the least worker, the less, least honorable worker may be rewarded richly. So, he said, be humble. And we know the Lord has called us for the lowest job. Ushering in people. Helping people. Praying for this may look very lowly ministry, lowly calling, but your, re your rewards will be very rich. So know that, he says. Know that whatever you are thinking, you are going to be rewarded. And then exceeding power of God to those who believe. Know that you have God's power. You don't need to depend on any power. Of course, in the human life, we have to depend upon the power of our parents, our brothers, sisters, our children, our relatives, our church, our society. We have to depend upon them. That's good. But God says, ultimately, more than anything else, God's power is for you. You can hold on to God's power. That's very important. Many of us know about another person, but we hardly know him. See, the three important things is this. The crux of the matter is this. Many of us know the another person. Okay. I know Abraham Selvaraj. All right, I know him. He is about my age. He has two, three children, two beautiful daughters, one nice boy. Got three grandchildren, two grandchildren, four grandchildren, I think. So, five grandchildren. So, he is very happy. And all I know him. I, everything I know about him, and since I know about him, I think I know him. But I don't know how to talk to his wife, how to talk to his daughters, how to talk to his son-in-law's daughters. Then only I will know what guy, type of guy he is in private. See, for many years, I was member of the marriage tribunal in Jampur district. And many of them come and tell me, about their spouse. I hardly know him, the man I married or the woman I married. I hardly know. I know everything about him or her. I know she's beauty or he's earning well. You know, men go for beauty, women go for wealth. Very smart people. They say, don't know him. What do you know about Jesus? We know everything about Jesus. We know he was born where? No, he was mother. We know his disciples, we know his miracles, we knew his death on the cross, we know the resurrection of him and the ascension we know and we are waiting for him to come. We know all that, but do you know him? Have you ever talked to him? Have you ever talked to him? I still remember the Madras Christian College when I was studying there, there was a very pretty girl by the name Vanaja. She's very pretty, like an actress. Everybody, you know, but the, we never heard her talk, you know. So one day, what happened? In the hall there, we were standing, and she talked, she talked like that. Hey, you come here. <laughs> then only I knew, oh, she got a male voice. 
Have you seen men with a girl's voice? There are women with men's voice. You know, you can't help it. And this puts you off immediately. The beauty goes, everything goes, the attraction goes. Ayo. Before that, everybody will lie waiting for her to come from the railway station and walk to Christian College. Once they heard the voice, and none of them bothered. Because the minute you knew the person, you will have the true opinion. Do you know Jesus? Have you ever talked to him? The problem is, when I say, have you talked to him? And when he, does he answer you back? No, say, Pastor, you say talk to him, I talk to him, he never reply. The Bible says he will talk. You know who had the experience? Elijah. He was not in the, uh, <clears throat> what do you call, in the thunder, he was not in the lightning, he was not in the hurricane, he was not in the earthquake. Then a small, still voice. You know the meaning of still? Not moving. Still voice means no voice. Many of us don't know that, you know. Still voice. Still voice means being silent. You know where he speaks through? Through here. Isaiah chapter 48 or 16. 48, I think. I have not been silent. I have spoken from the very beginning. I was there when it was told. And the Holy Spirit will with me here. He speaks through here. You lost your way, Psalm 23. You are burdened with worry and think, Psalm 91. If you are tempted to take bribe, Psalm 46. Everything is here. It speaks to you through the words. You know, in Hosea, he said, I have written and given them excellent things. And they have ignored it. And therefore, they are perishing. So God will talk to you, number one. So <clears throat> you have to read the Bible. If you want to talk to Christ and to know who Jesus is, you have to read the Bible. And then meditate on the portions you read. You have to read the portion, then you meditate upon it. Then the Lord will inspire to open the Bible. You know, the new covenant is a communion. All right? And I was talking to a Pentecostal pastor who has visited us. I told him, uh, this communion is already in the Old Testament. He said, cannot be. He said, it cannot be because this is a new thing which Christ created. How can you tell me? So I, I told the Lord, show me and I opened the Bible. Proverbs chapter 5, you know. Straight away came. Come and eat the bread I have broken for you and the drink I mixed for you. It is in the Old Testament. I did not know. The Lord opened my eyes to it immediately and said it is there. It is there. So everything is here. So you have to read your Bible eh, and meditate and spend a quiet time meditating on the Lord. Now usually... We have a lot of time when you are traveling alone in the car. All right? Of course, you are aware of things going around you. If not, you'll be in mortuary. So you have to be aware of the things. But at the same time, you can be in a prayer attitude. Thanking the Lord, praising the Lord in your mind, you know. All the time or singing to the Lord and all that. All right. That is spending quiet time. Some people prefer 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, they pray. A friend of mine told me whether I like it or not, at 5.15 or 5.45, I get, wake up. I say, it's very good. Do you put Allah? He says, no, I never put Allah. Then how do you wake up? Don't worry, in the morning it starts, oh, I'm awake already. I told him, where's your house? The next to the big mosque there. <laughs> so you say, God has given you. I say, I have to put Allah and... I, last time I put it near my bed. I just off it and go to bed. Now what I made is I put the alarm a bit far away, my wife knows. So that I have to stop the alarm, I have to get up. Once you get up, then you are ready. All right. So spend quiet time listening to the still voice of the Lord. And 
be open to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. So how do you know the Lord will talk? This is the most important thing. The very interesting. This is my own uh, concussion. Bear with me. If you don't agree with it, just forget it. Ask the Lord to give you manase. You know what manase is? Forgetfulness. When Joseph married, got a son, he named him Manasseh so that I can forget the uh, bad things that happened to me by the hands of my father, my brothers in my father's house. So he called him Manasseh. So put a Manasseh. How do you know? This is very interesting. I have experienced, most of us have experienced. How do you know the other person is in love with you? You have not talked. You looked at your thing. How do you know you are interested in you? So, being a doctor, I did some research. By closely observing you, they will be observing you. Each other. I mean, a boy and a girl. Eh? They observe each other. They listen. You know, They may not talk to you, but they listen what you are talking. And then, they are leading the other person gives you. I was a stupid fellow. But I'm, before I met Sushi, that was a classmate of mine, medical college. So she was my classmate. Next to my number is her number. So we're always together. So I think there was a movie called My Fair Lady of Mary Poppins. I can't remember. So she, we were having osteology class where we study bones, sit together and study. And then she asked me, uh, Lakshman, have you seen the, my fair lady? I have not seen, but I say, yes, I have seen. My friend sitting next to me, Kanagaraj is no more developed. He's stupid fellow. She's asking you a question. You say, no means, you say, shall we go? Then you can take an error for a movie. You say, you have seen. Have you really seen? <laughs> no, I don't want to lose face because the movie is running for a month or so. If not gone, I'll be shy. You see, you don't know. So they give you leading questions. They give you leading questions to draw your attention. So then you know, like, then you talk, you smile, and then, hello, then you start holding hands, and then we fall in love. Same thing with the Bible, with our Lord. Look out first. Be attracted to His Word. I told you what, the first thing that attracts a person is the laughter or the, the way they speak. You hear the voice. It is, it's ringing in your ear, you know, all the time. Wow, very nice. Even So the, that's the Bible, the word of the Lord. Then you, the situations. I, when I was met my wife and fall in love with her, one day I was standing in Madre Junction to go down to Chennai from my uncle's house. She was coming from our village south. I don't know if she was coming that day. It was just coincidence. I was standing there, I saw the train pass by, she's sitting there in the thing. Then of course I went to the train and sat down and talked to her and all that. That was quite a time we spent together. Okay. You see, the Lord will give you the chances for you to know. You read the Bible, the Lord will give you the chance. The experiences will give you. Maybe not a good situation, but make you well. So you understand, you know, the Lord is in love with you. All right? And then he gives you the Holy Spirit and you follow. Now you're fully prepared. Now fully prepared for the adventure. So you have all the elements you needed. Now you have to step out in faith. And the Lord will walk with you. Two people who walked in faith. Discussing and talking about the events that took place on the Good Friday. Two of them was walking and the Lord joined. If you all the time your focus is on Christ Jesus, you will surely find him walking with you. Because he will not leave you alone. Matthew chapter 28, verse 28. I'll be with you all the days of your life. He is with us. Shall we begin the adventure by saying a prayer? Shall we? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you for teaching us, Lord, 
the importance of being an adventurer in Christian life. We thank you that you have equipped us, you have given us power, you have given us understanding, wisdom, and given us the light of understanding so that we can walk in faith and walk in strength, walk in sure hope that you are with us. We thank you, we praise you, bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.